Hey, my name is Jesus Castello for rubyguides.com and in this video you're going to learn about recursion. What is recursion? Well, recursion is a way to solve certain problems that tend to go on forever. You don't know when they are going to end. They go, they go, you might, be, you might have seen this screen and then there's a the screen, inside the screen, inside the screen, inside the screen, inside the screen. Well, that's recursion, keeps going. So in terms of programming, what that means is a function or a method, which is practically the same thing, that calls itself, it keeps calling the same function name until the solution is found. So that's what the idea of recursion. So remember the idea of the screen, in the screen, in the screen, in the screen, in the screen, right? That, that's the idea of recursion. It keeps going inside, it keeps going spiraling in, inwards, infinitely until you arrive at the solution. So let me show you an example of code. First, um, I have the factorial number. So a factorial number is, for example, the factorial of five is we take five and starting from one, we do one times two, two, and the result of this times three, the result of all of that times four times five. So we start from one to the to our actual number and that's our result. 120 in this case. So you can do that using in two ways using iteration, which is or normal the normal way to do it using a while loop or an each method inject like in this case or some other way. And this is the normal way that we will do it, right? So let me show you the output. If I call this method, curve interactive iterative factorial five, we get 120. So this using the inject method. I have another video on this if you are interested. Interested. And this is a shortcut where I'm telling inject to take every number in this range and then multiply it. So effectively, what's happening is this. It's just as simple as this, doing one times two times three times four times five or until the number that you put in there. How can you do this using recursion? Well, let's see an example. If I take this recursive factorial, we start on the top of a recursive function or method, you are almost always going to have this base case. This is the formal name, base case. And what this means, this is like the stopping condition. So, you know, in a while loop, in a while loop, you have like, while this is true, then do that. Or an if statement, if this is true, do this. That's basically the idea of the base case this is when we arrive at the solution, we are done processing. This is where we stop uh, the recursion, right? So this is very important to have. So in this case, what we're doing is returning one if n, so n is the number we're working with, is less or equal than one. So, in this case, instead of doing of starting from one, I'm going from five to one. So I'm starting from five or the water number we pass in. So this is doing five times four times three times two times one. Sometimes it's easier if you start from the top and go to the bottom. In fact, I find that's a bit more natural when doing recursion, it's more natural to go from bottom to top than from top to bottom or from the end to the beginning 
right? I think you, I think you get the idea. So that's what's going on here. When we reach the bottom, in, the, in this case one, because we are working with numbers, we just return that number, and then it 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 returns the 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 method. It ends the method. It ends the recursive um, function. So the next thing that's going on is the recursive call. So what this means is notice the name of the method is recursive factorial. So we are using the same method. Notice there is no while statement. There is no each. There is no inject. There is none of that. There is no loop. So this looping, this recursion. That's the difference. In here, we don't have any loops. The actual um, progress, the repetition of the action, is made by calling the method itself. And what's happening here is n times the recursive factorial of n minus 1. And if I run this, you can see we get the same result, 120. So what's going on in here? Well, this calls, when we call this, this method is calling n minus 1. So it's calling 5 minus 1, so that's 4. Then it looks like this. But it's not done because it's not 1. So it's going to do this again. No 3. I'm going to put this in another line so you can see. No, it's 2. Oh, and we reach 1, so it's done. So this is what's happening. Why? Because it's doing minus 1. This The n minus 1. So when it, when it comes back, it returns the actual numbers. So it's 1 times 2 which is 3, uh, this is what's happening behind the scenes. Then it's 3 times 3, which becomes 9. Then but you can see it's like it's unfolding the, the result as the methods return. As the, it's like a stack of methods. I keeps going, then it does this, 4 um, times 9, uh, we lift us 36, and finally it's 36 times 5, should be 120, which is the final result. That's how the recursive function works. Goes all the way to the all the way to the bottom. Then when it comes back, it starts adding the results. It starts doing the actual multiplication, and the final result is the total of doing all of that work. So that's recursion, and like I said, there are some problems that where recursion could be very useful, especially problems that do like that screen thing I described, when you find something that keeps folding or looping into itself, like for example, if we have um, like nested arrays, something like that, and you don't know how many there are, that's one one possible case. And you can also solve this with something called a stack, with a using recursion stack, stack. That's another so, um, alternative solution. The recursion is often using a stack plus loop. It's so an alternative to recursion for this kind of problems. 
So that's recursion. I hope you found this interesting and useful. Please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel now so we can get more people watching these videos. We can get the channel growing and things like that. So thanks for watching. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and improving your Ruby skills.